This week's channel message from the angels is actually two or maybe even three messages <laughs> from the angels that I am, uh, because of some of the events that are happening uh, that are on the horizon, I'm reaching back to some messages that I channeled in 2020 and 2021. And then I also have a new message to share with you uh, that's very, I think, important about the role that we are playing in the process of the ascension, the shift in energies on the earth. So welcome back to my channel, you guys. It is great to have you here. Um, uh, for those of you who are new, my name is Ann Tucker. I'm a trans channel. I channel from the angelic realm, and I do that by going into a deep uh, meditation, deep state of trance, and from there, I raise my awareness up as high as I can go, and I go a little higher, and I connect at the angelic realm. I bring through messages and healing, uh, which I share with you guys here on YouTube. I do that. I channel in advance. I dictate when I channel. I speak through my voice. They speak through me and I use dictation software and that's why I'm able to go back and put in the punctuation and break it out into paragraphs so it's a lot easier for us to talk about and understand. So uh, this week's message is, uh, yeah, it's, it's this, I love this message. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. And they're talking about, um, the role that we play in grounding the energies of the shift, uh, the great shift in consciousness. But before I share that message, I want to go into, uh, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, on YouTube just recently about the eclipse, about the upcoming eclipse. And, uh, people are calling it the, the Jonas eclipse, um, and so when I looked into that, I was super curious about it and I, and I'll explain all the reasons I have for it, but I saw so many things that were amazingly similar, that there were so many crazy coincidences. And I, I just, you know, I just kind of started and along my path, I stopped believing that coincidences are just coincidences that often they are meaningful. And so I'm going to share with you all this information and let you come to your own conclusions. But I personally think, uh, yeah, that we are headed to some very exciting times with the eclipse. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just dig right in and share that with you. And then after that, uh, and I'll show you, share with you how all of it relates to, uh, some channeled messages that I have gotten about a blackout and then a uh, three day blackout. And then, uh, and then after that, we'll go into the message for the week. All right, here we go. If you are enjoying these messages and you haven't already, I would love it if you would please subscribe to the video and like the video. It would help a lot. So thanks so much. And now let's dig in. So now we have the eclipse season that we are in. The first eclipse, it's, you know, it's like a bookend. There's the, the full lunar eclipse and then the full solar eclipse. And they, they're kind of a bookend of an eclipse period. And the first one is at the end of March. The second one, the, the lunar eclipse is in March. The solar eclipse is in early April, April 8th, I think. And so there's been a lot of discussion about the energies around these eclipses. Um, and so the part of the reason people have been talking about this and, uh, is, and you guys know that I am not a, I don't know really very much about the Bible at all. I did not grow up in a religious family. I have very little religious upbringing. I think that was on purpose. I think it's because this way I kind of came into it without any preconceived pressures you know, to see things one way or another, but this is referencing stuff in the Bible and the angels have referenced stuff in the Bible before. Um, and they probably have referenced things in a lot. I know they reference stuff in the Torah and they probably have referenced things in a lot of other books of wisdom that I'm not familiar with. So people always tell me after the fact, oh yeah, that means this in Hebrew, or that means that anyways, that I don't know. So, um, so here is, uh, if I can get it to share quickly with you, I want to talk about the eclipse and share a couple of slides that I prepared. All right. So this is the eclipse path um, for the upcoming eclipse. Now, there was another eclipse that happened, the last one that happened in the fall that actually crossed over this one that also went over the United States. It went in the opposite direction from the south up to the up to the northwest where I live. And the two of these intersect, these two eclipses actually intersect over, uh, over Texas, which is like a whole nother discussion, right? Like there's a whole bunch of conversation about that as well. And what does that mean? And, and how it seems to bifurcate the U.S., right? You know, creating different quadrants. Like we've been talking about the separation of the United States and how that is something the angels have talked about. So these eclipses are playing into all of this conversation, which is why I feel like we really need to take a moment and look at it. Um, uh, and know that an eclipse in the language of astrology, an eclipse is a faded event. 
right? Something that's destined to happen that will be a changing of our trajectory. It's, it's a, and the effect of an eclipse can, can last uh, up to six months before the actual event and to, up to six months after. So this is the range of time. Of course, it's strongest at the moment of the eclipse, but the effects continue to last for a period of about six months both, on both ends in both directions. So, okay, so this is the second eclipse. First eclipse was in the fall that went from the south, you know, going up this way. This one is happening now from the, uh, from the, uh, southwest up to the northeast. And the one that went, the first one back in the fall, when that one crossed the U.S., it crossed over multiple towns, at least near or close to multiple towns that all shared the name Salem, which is a derivative of the word, or the name Jerusalem. So why is that? I don't know. That's a whole nother story. But it was weird at the time that it hit like Salem, Oregon and Sa all these different Salems, right? Now, <laughs> this eclipse is traveling a path you can see in this picture from NASA that goes through through or close to multiple uh, uh, towns or cities that have the name Nineveh. So, uh, so, and you can see the yellow dots, and I got this particular slide from a, uh, a, a guy who was a fact checker, specifically from his website, and I tried to cite his source here, if you can see, I cited the source uh, where I found it on his website. So he double checked to see like, how close are these cities that are named Nineveh? And you can see the yellow dots, some of them are smack on the curve, three of them, or two of them are smack in the, in the, right in the path of that gray line, the gray bar, right? which is the uh, the pathway of like the strongest occurrence where people will actually be able to see the eclipse. There's two towns named Nineveh that are actually in the path, but all the other yellow dots, some of them are really close, right? We've got two more that are really close and then three more that are close-ish that are all named Nineveh. So interesting, right? Next we have, oh, so I wanted to share with you guys the, uh, so in the Bible, who is Nineveh? And like I said, I don't know anything about the Bible. <laughs> the only reason I know this is because other people on YouTube have been talking about it. And they, so that, so I, and I don't even know who to credit because like so many different people are talking about it. So, um, so who is Nineveh? There is a, a passage in the Bible that uh, reads, and I'll just read it out loud to you guys. It says, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh a sign or seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And this has an interesting meaning for me. So Jonas, uh, uh, I had to look this up because uh, uh, several months ago, because a, a friend of mine was in the middle of a property sale, trying to sell a very important piece of property that was, uh, was basically his life's work. And he was in the process of trying to sell it. And he was really stressed out. And he asked me to channel, like, when is this going to happen? When, you know, what's going to happen? And you know, the angels don't typically give me time frames, but they did <laughs> this time. And what they told him, they said, yep, the property is going to sell. It's, and they used uh, an astro astrological marker. They said it will happen within the next lunar cycle. And then they said that they did describe the buyers. They said it would be not investors. It would be a family. It would be, and they described everything about it. And then they said that it would be Jonas. And they didn't say it, he would be Jonas. They said it would be Jonas. So I thought, okay, that's a, that's a, a meaning of something. It's a metaphor or symbol. What does Jonas mean? So I looked it up and it said a gift from God. Jonas, the meaning in Hebrew of Jonas is gift from God. So what's interesting <laughs> about how that then unfolded is that sure enough, in the next lunar cycle, he sold the property and the couple that bought it was exactly like the angels described. And it was a gift from God because there was these, there were these, these circumstances that came up in the sale that were created. It was going to be real. It ended up like there was something he discovered that was going to make it really hard to sell. And the people decided they wanted it anyways. So it was one of those things where it was like, oh my gosh, he had a moment of panic. Everything was going to fall through. And then boom, everything worked out beautifully. So we thought, wow, it was totally Jonas. It was a gift from God. But the important reason I bring it up now is because in the aftermath, yes, it was a gift from God. And it turned out to be an incredibly karmic and healing experience for him, that it brought him into a situation where he was confronting much of his, some, some really important wounding that he needed to clear. So, so the transaction, though it was an amazing gift from God, and though it did, everything turned out beautifully, the road to get there was bumpy, right? Really bumpy. So gift from God means, yeah, Jonas, it's, yeah, it's a gift from God, but gifts from God often mean 
that we are shown the deepest parts of ourselves that we need to heal. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it comes with like flowers and a box of chocolates. <laughs> it sometimes comes, you know, with a prickly pear <laughs> somewhere in there. So, okay, so that's background on the name Jonas. So, so here is this thing, this prophecy or this passage in the Bible about Jonas, right? That there shall be no sign given, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. The next line in this bit from the Bible, it says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So this really caught my attention when I saw that because um, the angels have been talking about the flash of light, right? They've been talking about the energy being heavy in the spring so that this solar eclipse is happening in the spring. The angels previously, starting as early as 2020, they have been talking about a blackout. And that when they first talked about it, they said it would be it would be three days of darkness is what they described. And I remember I have no knowledge of the Bible. I didn't know anything about a prophecy about three days of anything. And they specifically said three days of darkness. So that immediately caught my attention <laughs> when I saw this just literally just the other day on YouTube, somebody was talking about this. Oh, it's the, you know, it's the Jonas prop, the Jonas eclipse, right? And so I had, I saw this, I thought three days, holy cow, blackout. What does this mean? So then they go on to say, um, the three, the rest of this passage from the Bible says the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. So Nineveh, that's why they're calling it the Jonas eclipse because they mention Nineveh. And this solar, the solar eclipse is passing through all of these towns named Nineveh, right? There are like seven or eight or nine towns that are either on directly on the path or very close to the path of the eclipse, all named Nineveh. So, right, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation that they shall condemn it because they re repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here, a greater than Jonas. Greater gift, a greater and even greater gift. And this thing about condemning, like I know that a lot of the places where I've seen this have been religious, you know, channels that talk about this stuff. And there's a lot of things about repenting. Well, I don't see it that way. That's not how I understand how life and spirit works. I see it as healing, right? That And that think about what happened with my friend when he had, when he received something that was Jonas, it was an incredible gift. And it helped him to see himself and to heal from within. And it all did turn out beautifully because it was a gift, right? It was a gift that allowed him, yes, to heal and to receive exactly what he needed. So, so that's how I read that. It's not that there's some external, you know, judge who's telling us we are wrong or we are right. It is a, a blessing that carries within it something difficult that allows us to see ourselves. So, okay, so this is the eclipse. This is this weird and interesting thing about the eclipse passing through <laughs> so many towns named Nineveh. So next thing, and I know this is really, I know all of this, I have to share it with you guys because it's, it kind of is blowing my mind. And, uh, and then like, we just have to think about it together. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> Cause it's, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, uh, so let me get to the next, next slide here. So the next thing that came up is that if you look at the solar eclipse and you say, okay, the, if you look at the star chart of the eclipse, when it is at its maximum, it has, uh, it both all, uh, all three of its planets, its sun, its moon, and, uh, are, are in Aries as well as Cryon, which is, or Chiron or Cryon, it's hard to say Chiron, uh, uh, sun, moon, and Cryon are all at 19 degrees of Aries. For the star, uh, for the star chart of the eclipse, when it is at it is at its maximum, at 19 degrees of Aries, are there any fixed stars? So a fixed star is one that we see as kind of not really moving, and those fixed stars have been studied for centuries, and they have specific meanings. And sure enough, there is a fixed star at 19 degrees of Aries, and that particular fixed star is called Baton Kaitos, and uh, it is a binary star in the whale or sea monster Cetus constellation, right? So the traditional name Ben Kaidos comes from the Arabic of, I can't pronounce that, which means the belly of the sea monster, belly of the whale. Not joking. <laughs> so, and then to add to this interesting little factorama, that the that third sign, that we got the sun, we've got the moon, and we have 
um, cryon, or not cryon, but uh, that other thing, cryton, or I can't pronounce it, is, is the symbol for the wounded healer. It's a sign of healing. So, which to me is what Jonas is all about. It is a gift from God that allows us to heal. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking at all of this. Um, and then looking at this in relationship to the messages that we've gotten from the angels. And, uh, and so I want to share those with you as well. The messages from those previous channelings that I've done in 2020, 2021. So they've been talking about this for a while, this, this blackout period, right? And, uh, and you guys are saying, um, uh, that, that, uh, I've been, uh, led to these videos on YouTube that spread the fear of the eclipse, but spread love in the comments instead. That is awesome. Cause it is, it's all about love. It's not about fear. Exactly. I'm so glad you're, you're helping. And Lisa says, whales are a big part of earth energy healing. Yes. You're saying, wow, wow. Yep. Yeah. Cry on. Thank you so much, Maureen. I was getting super tongue tied. I'm trying to pronounce that. <laughs> so, okay. So there's all this interesting stuff symbology around the eclipses. So, so back in 2020, uh, uh, for, it was a uh, September 16th, 2020, I channeled, um, that there would be a period of blackout. They said a period of blackout where we will remove from you the means by which you telecommute, the method by which you telephone, all will be silent to ensure this completion. We have assured you that you are safe. And, uh, and then they said that when we talked about, when we asked them, when would this happen? They said it would happen, uh, in the period of your twofold remembrance. And I did not understand what that meant before, but I was thinking about, and my son was, he was the one that was asking questions when, uh, when I got that message and, and he is, uh, uh, thought immediately of the Remembrance Day and Veterans Day, that that's a twofold Remembrance Day, which was November 11th, which was like 11-11. We thought, oh my gosh, it has to be that. And that made a lot of sense, except <laughs> um, uh, uh, that I think about how the angels, the, the few times that the angels have given me timing, and it's been accurate, they've used astrological symbols. They've used the skies, right? They talked about lunar cycles. They said, this will happen in the next lunar cycle, right? They, they don't, they tend to talk about things in terms of the stars, so what would be a day of dual or period of dual remembrance? Um, and so I thought about, well, dual, we have eclipses come in pairs. We have the lunar eclipse and we have the solar eclipse. And that, and I don't know, are, are eclipses, are they referred to in any way? Else to, and I don't know this because I'm not an astrological expert. Are they referred to in any way as periods of remembrance or events of remembrance? I don't know. So, um, but certainly it got me thinking a period of dual remembrance that, and that it is a period and it's, it's two, it's blank. There's a, the, the male, you know, the lunar and the, and the solar. So anyways, it really got me thinking. Um, and Gina says, uh, shout out to the whales. <laughs> totally. Gina has a personal connection to the whales. So, <laughs> so that is awesome. So, okay. So, um, so they said, yeah, so they said in this channeling that came in, like I said, in 2020, there was another one before that where they called it three days of a three days of, of darkness is how they referred to it. Three day period of darkness. And here they're calling it a period of blackout. So here is what else they said about that. Let me pull up this other um, channeling that I had about it. Here it is. So if I can, and this one's tiny print, so forgive me. Let's see if I can read this one to you. Uh, you can feel her enlivening with solar retort. There are many circumstances of solar elevation, but one will come, one elevation supreme, to knock out all elevation communication. It will subside, freeing yourselves to be relieved of that duty of learning complexity, that technological progress which has hampered your spiritual progress, that upliftment temporary into godlike states of communion with one another without the required passage of elevation of spirit. Indeed, it does not hinder the growth so much as prevent it. It does harbor within the frequency of elevation, subtracting God. It has no soul within, no frequency of light, no illumination for your benefit. It has, however, the enchantment of elevation, the ready connection, infusion of compatibility with, with another, the light and easy touch of technology to do all sorts of things as you are. But now receive the true lightness, the true elevation of spirit that unites all within the context of humanity in peace and love, uniting in all circumstances, housing within it the true resonance of your capacity for care of one another. 
If this is another frequency of difference. Yes, of belonging, not having, of being settled in the self, of acknowledging your own wisdom within, not seeking external gratification from inundation with digital frequencies, promising connection of another sort, unsatisfying, bereft of kind heart, lacking true wisdom, holding the frequency of depravity, of lack, heresy, and foreboding. These are all encumbered in technology as you house it today. We release you from it. We cure your heart and heave you together into the future now, that housing of fabric woven from love and caring for one another, that tenderness of heart found lacking today. You will attain it, but by upheaval. This is the journey forward. So this message came through in uh, 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 August 12, 2021 is when they talked about this. And so that message, just to give you a recap, because I still have a whole nother message to share for today. That message, just to give you a recap, is really saying that that we currently, our technology right now, and I've often noticed this, that many of the spiritual gifts that we have, that we can develop, such as channeling, such as telepathy, such as uh, 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 being, um, being able to read each other's emotions, empathy, right? All of those are imitated by technology, that technology allows us to communicate at a distance, just like, like telepathy or, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, telepathy would. So technology is almost like it replaces some of the ways that we communicate through spirituality. And th that's what they're saying is they're saying that we have achieved godlike states, you know, spiritual like states of connection with one another, but without the connection, without the spirit involved, we have, we have all the signs of it, but none of the heart of it. And so they're saying that, so that they're saying we have technology, but in the absence of spirit. And they say they need to turn off the technology so that we can develop the spirit, right? That we can learn to connect and to hear one another, um, it, through our spiritual connections and through the unity that we want to share with one another. So that's what they're saying. So they're talking about this blackout as being a period during which technology goes dark so that we can start to connect in the way that we were meant to, right? Without technology. Not that technology is bad. They said in another time that we would, we wouldn't forget everything that we learn. We would keep our technology. It's just that it would be almost like a reboot for the consciousness of technology, that it would be rebirth in the new energies. So it would have soul within it, right? As opposed to being soulless is how they described it right now. Like that's pretty heavy what they're saying in here about that it is, uh, uh, that is connection of a sort unsatisfying, bereft of kind heart, lacking true wisdom, holding the frequency of depravity, of lack, heresy, and foreboding, right? And that's so true. <laughs> like think about how crazy the the internet is today with all of the the like what's available on the internet. Like a lot of it is not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. So yeah, so so that is how they've been talking about this since 2021. And uh and then recently all this conversation about the solar about this uh, this flash of light that we're expecting, which um, may be the thing that creates the three days of darkness. I don't know. I'm putting these things, when I tend to draw connections, it's hard, you know, because we, we have glimpses, we have pieces of the picture. We don't have the whole picture. But uh, but it this could, the reason I want to share all of this with you is just to give you all of the information so that you can come to your own conclusions. <laughs> but I will tell you that the conclusions I'm coming to as I listen to all this and I see all of this, as I think, okay, eclipses, faded events, wounded healer, I look at, at what I know about the meaning of the word Jonah. It's a gift from God, but it carries within it the, the, the wounded, the wounded healer, you know, of, of Cryon, of Chiron, that, uh, that it carries a lesson for learning. And then here we have the angels telling us, you know, in a period of dual remembrance, which may or may not be the eclipses, but it kind of fits to me. Like it's, I don't know, it feels right. I could be wrong. I would love to know anybody in a, who's familiar, who's really an expert at astrology, who can, can share, shed some light on that. If there is any connection between remembrance and eclipses and, uh, and then that taking us to the idea of the, the star, right? The fixed star, which is, um, uh, the meaning of the fixed star that, that is on the path where the, the eclipse is at its most expressed, that, that, that fixed star means the belly of the whale, right? And then the passage in the Bible about the belly of whale, the whale, us being in it in three days of darkness. Yeah. 
and it's a period of healing. So, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> That's all I could say. So yeah, I told you we had a lot to talk about today, right? Like, holy cow. Yeah, and, and you guys are saying technology is part of what is creating separation between and among us. Exactly. It's like what, what happens when we take something wonderful and we take it in the direction that's not infused with spirit, right? It's the knowledge without the love. When we, We've taken love out of it entirely. And so it's completely coming from the head. And so we it's infused with fear. It's, you know, like think about like all the people that like on YouTube, like I deliberately try not to use like like fear tactics and like scare tactics in my YouTube thumbnails, even though I know that that is what's supposed to affect the algorithm, but it does not feel like that's in my integrity. You know what I mean? It feels like it's, it is not, it, and like, can you balance that? Like, okay, you want to share the message, but you don't, I don't want to fear monger. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> you know? like, I'm just not going to, I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. You know, it doesn't feel like it's coming from the right place. And, and, uh, and that is, that is where we are today with technology. We are in a place where fear sells and, you know, and it's just the, it's just the truth. So, um, and it pulls us further and further apart It is separation away from our heart. So that's, I think why they're saying it has to be shut down that, that things have gotten so big that they cannot be changed as they are. They have to be turned off and then restarted again, just like we humanity how do we change when we're so entrenched we have so much riding on the way things staying that the same thing staying as they are that we have to lose it all so that we're willing to start over again yeah so wow and you're saying stand your ground thank you i will <laughs> thank you you're saying and tech is wonderfully healing as well we are all connected here in this message via technology isn't that true thank you for that yeah absolutely it is not all bad right we are using it and it does we we are right now experiencing an aspect of the divine which is connection so it does bring us that so we do want it back we just want it in the consciousness of of spirit yeah so to take the good and leave the bad right yeah so um so, okay, so let's get into the message for today because the message for today is about, uh, it's, it's a really beautiful one and it's, it sounds simple on the front and then of course it's not simple. It's saying like, you know how I'm always saying that we are the neurons of the earth, that we are part of her, that, that essentially we are like her cells, like her, her neural cells that think and our thoughts are her thoughts and our collective consciousness is like her brain. <laughs> And so what we think she thinks. So super interesting is that if you think about processing the solar, like the, the flash of light that's coming, this lovely wave of light that's coming, processing it, how does the earth process it? And what this message is saying is that we are part of how she processes it. As we process it, she processes it. And one of the ways we process it is through our breath. So, um, so this is beautiful. So just hold that in your mind as you hear the message and then we'll go back and talk about it afterwards. All right. So here we go. Here's the message for this week. They say breathing to become breathing to be well, the breath as an air of remembrance for all ways of being. We wish to help yourselves to comprehend the meaning behind the changing you're experiencing now to help you grasp the whole and entirety amid the overwhelm of what transpires. In the days that are sanctioned to come, that shall arrive, we herald an enormous transformation of for yourselves, a separation from what was, a renewed instigation of caring about the earth, a heavier burden upon yourselves to care for her, and a heavier acquaintance with the trials and tribulations that are stirring within her. We say the breath, the breathing that is to be done, the breath as you enter into care and concern for family, for loved ones, for all that shall happen, for the way the world transpires, the breath shall rise within yourself. Within this breath, you are welcome to admire the complexity of thought the feeling of surrender, the understanding of yourself as riding a wave to equality and the un undoing of all that is hardship between and amongst yourselves, of all that reigns in 
parallel comprehension and provide yourselves with the inextinguishable sensation of having been somehow forlorn and forgotten. We say the powerful now, the time has come to surrender to the potent beginnings. The time is now. It is arriving for the self to see yourselves as overcoming what shall transpire. To recognize that you transpire in each breath, you draw down into form the parallel existence of life from without. The internal horizon reforms itself to arrive at the next now. You are living in the broadest shape and surrender to the next now. But the consciousness of what you are clings to the old and the ways of knowing and being and doing. These shall succumb in the violence of surrender in the times before you. The reshaping of what is life, of what is earth, of what shall be, of what shall be comes into form, but slowly. Respirate, to breathe, to remember that you are healing the earth with each causing of yourself. Surrender to her. Surrender to the instigation of this earth's blessing, of her greatest achievement yet, of her own belonging to the eternal mind, of her reaching to a higher state and frequency, to her own ascension and shift, and you are part of this surrender. Within the state of your own opening, the mind runs parallel to her own beginnings, and you feel yourself enveloped within the new times that are coming. The shape of your breath shall change and grow deeper, and you should become one with her and all things. But the breath, what transpires between the breath of now and later shall overturn and suggest to yourself that the memories you've held are long forgotten and the new sensations can only yield such blessings as you have never known. The uncomfortableness of the in-between and surrender, the letting go, the having no knowing, the sensation that you are unveiling a tomorrow that is unclear. In the breath, you find your release. In the exhale, you find your belonging. The sensation that you are extinguishing upon the earth the breath of your own fatigue, of your own exile, of your own desire, of your own expiring notions of change and what's coming. Letting go, opening, yielding, exhaling. In the breath, the intake of the breath, the opening of the nose, the mouth, the chest, and the heart that grows in the dim surrender to the inhale, the longing to yield, the surrender to what is now the next moment, to draw into the self the unknown, to take in, to take on what surrounds you, to let and allow the breath to be, and to yield the body in its knowings to this world as it grows in the endowment of grace that is given in each breath that you take. You are one with the earth, and you inhale and exhale old meanings, old thoughts, and frequencies. These are gifted back to the soil, and you become the new earth, and the new earth becomes you, and the two shall intertwine and renew each other. We draw you back to the breath to remember that in the days we herald, in the times that come, the breath shall remain a constant unto which you can hold and rely upon the self in the inhale and the self in the exhale are regulated by the consciousness of the one self the soul that you are you have at your core the ability to unfold the new now in surrender in thought in beliefs in actuality and in the process of your acceptance in the inhale. In disbursement, in the exhale, you create more of this, more of life and living. 
The self that you are instigates change and becomes it all the same. We wish for the self to draw to your to draw your heart, your mind back to the breath in change, in moments of trial, in moments where purity is lost, where chaos ensues, find your breath. Breathe in and surrender to the thought of your own divinity. Feel your intertwinement with this earth and surrender your thoughts to the new. Be that self, accepting all that is within you. Create in the frame of your exchange of breath a new reality which you exude with each impression that is held in the breath you release to the earth. You shall be come renewed as she shall. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I love this message. <laughs> I love this message. It is so beautiful. I just, I find this to be so beautiful. And I find, like, if I had to, to like I said, I just had to really bring it into just, like, one thing. What is this message about? It is telling us how powerful we are in this process of, of this shift, right? That, that we know that we're supposed to be in love during this shift, that we're supposed to release, right? And released our expectations and open to the new, but they're bringing it back to this idea that the way that we release, the way that we open, like in the inhale, like think about what we're doing when we inhale, like think about when you take it into your body, a breath, you're taking in everything around you into your body, that surrender, right? And, and what I love is that that is a, ma a mix of the masculine and the, and the feminine, the inhale, right? Bringing everything in, is the expansion of that's a masculine energy, but the surrender inside of that is that we are surrendering to everything, whatever is in that air, we are taking it in, right? That air could have all kinds of who knows what particles in it, right? <laughs> and we are breathing it in and allowing it to become us, right? That air that comes into the body comes into the blood and it fuels us and it becomes part of who we are. So it is, it is the ultimate surrender, the breath to inhale. And so, and then when we exhale, we're releasing everything we're done with, right? Everything that we've, where we've taken the growth, where we've taken the life and we're surrendering and yielding that, you know, out, exhaling that out. And that then becomes integrated into the soil, just like carbon. I mean, like carbon really is captured and brought into the soil by the plants. And there's a lot of reference. They talk a lot about, about transpiring, which is how plants breathe, right? Like they're, they transpire, they're releasing vapors. So it's interesting how that's that, and they lock carbon and bring it into the soil. So it's, it's all of this stuff mixes and comes together. I feel like we could talk about it from 50 different angles. It's just mind bending to me. Absolutely mind bending. It's hard to think like an angel. I tell you, it's very, I think we're, they're trying to dumb it down as much as they can so we can get it. And I am trying to stretch as much as I can so that I can understand it. Like, yeah, it is, it is amazing. But, uh, but it's that idea that, that, so in this process of trying to absorb the, the light that's coming for us, this beautiful wave of light that's coming for us, we are meant to, to, to surrender, to inhale, to let it come into our body, to let it change us. And then as we exhale, that change then becomes what's all, it becomes part of the earth, right? So it's almost like we're grounding that energy into the earth. Like we are part of how it gets accepted how it becomes part of our reality, which makes sense because we are creating our reality. So we have to let the light in through our breath and we exhale that out into the world and we become, the light becomes us and the world becomes light, right? Like, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I'm just, it's, holy cow. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and you guys are saying, uh, uh, thanks for not sensationalizing. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Jean says, the wounded healer many times helps those who suffer the same way they have suffered in the past. Yes, which is, I think that is so beautiful here because it is. It is helping us to find the ways in which we are locked into old, old stuff. The stuff we're meant to be healing right now, right? That we're meant to be raising our frequency. We're meant to be healing as much as we can. Like we have every tool available to us right now to heal. Yeah. Oh, respirate, re respirate, remember, respirate. Oh, interesting. That is so cool. Wow, that means me. And they, I didn't even realize this because we were talking about the days of the, the period of uh, dual remembrance. And I didn't even realize they used remembrance in the first paragraph here. And as soon as I, I was like, oh my gosh, there's that word again in the first paragraph. So there's all these connections that are just connected enough to make you go, huh, 
but not so connected that you're like, oh yeah, I absolutely have it. They're just all these connections that are just enough to make us wonder. Yeah. So make us guess. Hmm. So, all right. So let's go into um, uh, breaking it down paragraph by paragraph. So here is what they say. First paragraph, breathing to become, breathing to be well, the breath as an air of remembrance for all ways of being. We wish to help yourselves to comprehend the meaning behind the changing you're experiencing now to help you grasp the whole and entirety amid the overwhelm, overwhelm of what transpires. So here they're saying, okay, and they usually tell us in the first paragraph what the message is about. And so they're saying breathing to become. So this is like they're saying that our breath is tied to our uh, uh, shift in consciousness, breathing to become, breathing. And it's also tied to our expression of ourself. The breath is how we express ourselves and, and our soul on earth and create our world. So it's breathing to become. Then it's also breathing to be well, that we breathe in in order to live, right? That we have to breathe to stay alive. The breath as an air of remembrance for all ways of being. And that, so, and then they say, we wish to help yourselves to comprehend the meaning behind the changing you're experiencing now to help you grasp the whole and entirety amid the overwhelm of what transpires. So the breath as an air of remembrance for all ways of being. And I think this is about that, that we are the air of remembrance and the breath is referring to the healing, I believe, of all of our ways, all the different ways that we've been, right? All of the different pathways that we've walked in our various lives that we are we are in the process of this healing journey right now um and so i think that is as an era of remembrance for all ways of being uh the wish to help yourselves to comprehend the meaning behind the changing you're experiencing now so this is really like how we fit into the whole process of the earth shifting her frequency and how we're meant to navigate the flash of light that's coming. And then there, there are three flashes, there are three waves of light that are coming. I just, we only know about the first one so far. They told us there are three and they haven't really talked about the second two. They say to help you grasp the whole and entirety amid the overwhelm. Yeah, next paragraph. In the days that are sanctioned to come, what shall arrive, we herald an enormous transformation for yourselves, a separation from what was, a renewed instigation of caring about the earth a heavier burden upon yourselves to care for her and a heavier acquaintance with the trials and tribulations that are stirring within her. So this really fits with everything they said about us being the guardians, the caretakers of the earth ongoing, right? That, and they're saying it here, a heavier burden upon yourselves to care for her, right? So it's, and it's a renewed, like this is like it, something makes, something about this makes us like double down and really start paying attention to the earth and, and respecting the earth, taking care of the earth, right? A heavier acquaintance with the trials and tribulations that are stirring within her. In other words, that she's going to be going through some, and we've heard she taught, they talked about the earth rift, which is part of her healing. So there's some major earth movement that we're going to be going through. So we're going to have a heavier acquaintance with some of her shifting of energy. Yeah. And so at the beginning of this paragraph, they say, in the days that are sanctioned to come, and I like that word. It's one of those angel words with three meanings. So it could be angel word of the day. So sanctioned means it is a formal decree. And often it was an ecclesiastic decree, which I think is interesting. So like a religious, you know, like it's associated with spirit and with God, a, a formal decree. And the second meaning is that it is um, a, a solemn oath or agreement, which really makes me think. So in the days that are sanctioned to come, the oath or agreement. So it, not only is it sanctioned, is it, it is approved a formal decree by this by divine, but we agreed to come, right? A solemn oath or agreement. So we are in agreement to be here to experience it. And then the third meaning of sanctioned is uh, it's a, a coercive intervention. So in other words, it's like like think about how uh, like when uh, when we have when the U.S. wants to apply sanctions to another government to try to prevent them from whether it be human rights abuses or whatever, we have economic sanctions. These are penalties, things we try to restrict or, or they're like punishments where we try to restrict another person's movement, something that, that is coercive. In other words, it's something that's done to another person, but it's an intervention to try to put them on a corrective path. It's meant to be altruistic. I shouldn't have even brought in the politics because it's that as a whole nother layer. So let's pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> let's just focus on spirit. And focus on this flash of light. 
and say that intervention in the sense that, that this is a healing, right? This is meant to bring us back onto a path, a path to our own connection with source and to a connection to our higher selves, meant to help us to raise to a higher frequency, but it's coercive. In other words, we have to go through the stuff to get there, the heavier stuff, right? So lovely, totally amazing angel word of the day with three meanings, because that's how they are. That's how they roll. All right, so next paragraph. <laughs> and you guys are saying, um, uh, breathing is also meditating, totally. Uh, so Lisa Cheryl says, inhale, bring in the love, exhale, show that love with the world. Yes, beautifully and simply shared. Thank you, beautiful. Love in the last line. Yep, so good. So thank you. And then uh, where are we? Um, remembrance has been a common word in our community lately. It, yeah, interesting. And uh, you're saying meditate to heal and find our center, which is where they connect to us and we heal the whole. Yes, totally. Um, uh, all right, there we go. And then uh, here's what they say. The next paragraph, we say, we say the breath, the breathing that is to be done, the breath as you enter into care and concern for family, for loved ones, for all that shall happen, for the way the world transpires, the breath shall rise within yourself. And, uh, and I, I love this as I'm reading it, like it's, to me, this brings up two things. It is that the knowledge that when we have care for family, for what's happening, when, when things in the world are crazy, what do we do? We catch our breath, right? That we, their breath rises when, you know, we, we, you know, that even in panic, what happens when you panic your breath, you, you like, you can hyperventilate our breath rises, right? When we, when we have care and concern during things that are scary, right? Or things that worry us. But at the same time, they're saying that that's also how we heal through the breath. We raise the frequency of our breath when, so they're saying here's the unconscious and the conscious expression. The unconscious expression is to go into fear. The breath rises. The conscious expression is to allow yourself to, right, to yield to the breath, right? To surrender to the breath and let the breath be healing, right? To breath shall rise within yourself during these times. So if we just allow it, if we just open and say, okay, I'm feeling a little fear, open and surrender to my breath. And, and then the breath shall rise within you. They're saying it's almost like all we have to do is let go. If we just would simply let go, <laughs> then this will happen almost for us, right? It'll, that, it's like it literally surrender and it'll just happen inside of you. The breath shall rise within you. Within this breath, you are welcome to admire the complexity of thought the feeling of surrender. So they're saying, while you're surrendering, you might notice your head going monkey mind. You might notice that, okay, I've got this thought and this thought, and I'm worried about my aunt in Tallahassee, who's, you know, to whatever, like, and you can notice that and say, okay, I'm going to, and I, and at the same time to surrender the feelings of surrender. And at the same time, your mind might be busy, but the body is yielding, opening, surrendering to this breath. And the breath is deepening inside you, right? The understanding of yourself as riding a wave to equality, and the undoing of all that is hardship between and amongst yourself. So as you're doing this, the calm that you can you can hold is the knowing that this is going to help us to get to the place of unity, right? Of equality, of unity, and undoing all that is hardship. So all the karma that we have between us, they've talked about this repeatedly, that we're going to be letting go of all our karma. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! Right? And then they say, uh, of all that reigns in parallel comprehension. So parallel comprehension would be like when we have shared understanding, like telepathy, right? Parallel comprehension where we, and unity is also parallel where everybody is sharing a collective understanding of things. And then they say, and uh, so it, it reigns in that parallel comprehension, so prevents it and, it, and it provides yourselves with the inextinguishable sensation of having been somehow forlorn and forgotten. So, so we're, we're undoing that, right? We're trying to undo it, undo that feeling of having been somehow forlorn and forgotten. So that's, that is what we're, not, we're, we're aware of that as when we, when we might have fear come, when we see maybe it is this wave of light that's coming and maybe we freak out for a minute and then we remember, okay, surrender to our breath and let that breath, in. and as we do, it'll expand within it right? And expand within us. And we might still have the monkey mind. We might still be thinking, but keeping our consciousness on the breath, keeping our consciousness on the feeling of surrender and, and remembering that what's, what we're, what we're accomplishing by doing it, which is this move to unity, right? This move to love. So amazing. Yeah. And then here we go. Next paragraph. Uh, they say, we say the powerful now, the time has come to surrender again, that word surrender to surrender to the potent beginnings Right. So this is they're really calling on us to say this is the energy we're meant to hold when this light comes. 
The time is now, they say. It is arriving for the self to see yourselves as overcoming what shall transpire. And uh, and I, I underline the word transpire here because it is, uh, transpire means what will occur, be revealed, come to the light, right? What shall transpire, what shall occur, but it also means be revealed or come to light. And I love that, like it's come to light, like we are meant to come to the wave of light, right? It also means give off vapor, which is interesting. So to transpire, that's how plants breathe. So that's what I was talking about, how we are like the plants in that way that we're anchoring this energy into the earth in the same way that the plants anchor carbon into the earth. Yeah. Um, uh, so overcoming what shall transpire, to recognize that you transpire in each breath, you draw down into form the parallel existence of life from without, the shared meaning of life, right? That we bring that in, just like the plants that anchor carbon, we anchor the parallel, the, the shared experience of life, we anchor unity into the soil, right? Unity, and, and it's that unified thought. So imagine, like, remember, we are the neurons of the earth, and the earth is trying to go through her ascension, but in order to shift, she has to release her monkey mind and get from crazy mind to unified mind, which is what we are trying to do through this process. We're trying to breathe in unity and exhale that down into the earth, right? Wow. Yeah. And then they say, draw down into form the parallel existence of life from without. And into form is into the physical, into the physical of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. The internal horizon, so your own thoughts, how you see the world, how you see the horizon, reforms itself to arrive at the next now. So as we do this, we start to see the next now, right? It becomes, it's almost like we need to forget the concept that we have to make this happen and we have to surrender and let it happen. So we have to, it's the pathway is just so different from how we're used to being. We have to open, we have to allow, surrender, and then, and then we'll get this deepening breath and the horizon, how we see will change. Like it's, and we can't even really understand it. We just have to take the leap because it's really hard for us to understand how to do something we've never done. All right, next paragraph. They're saying, um, uh, you are living in the broadest shape and surrender to the next now. So they're saying that our consciousness is there. Like we're ready to go. We're in the broadest shape and surrender to the next now. So we're getting it. As we're hearing this, we're like, yeah, we are totally the choir and you are singing to us. <laughs> like we get it. All right. But the con is they, but the consciousness of what you are doing, uh, uh, the consciousness of what you are clings to the old. So our collective consciousness, so saying we may be listening to all this and being like, yes, yes, yes. But our collective consciousness clings to the old and the ways of knowing and being and doing. These shall succumb in the violence of surrender in the times before you. So, and they're using like potent words, the violence of surrender in the times before you. In other words, so that, that, that even though we may be on board with this, if you're hearing this and you're, you're feeling like, yes, 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 I'm ready, bring it on. There's still the collective that is not there yet. And, but they're saying that, remember they talked about that, uh, that, and where they use the specific words up here, but it is the sanctioned, right? It's a sanctioned change, that it is a coercive uh, change that's happening, that it's going to be the world is changing around us. We're going to be going through massive upheaval, even and already. I don't even need to say that because we are in massive upheaval every day. There's crazy, crazy, craziness happening, things we would have never imagined happening on every front. And it's going to get more so, right? And they're saying that that these shall succumb, that the collective consciousness will eventually in this process of this external change that's happening around us, this coercive change, it will succumb in the violence of surrender, which means it's not an easy change, that the, that the way things are, the powers that be currently on the earth are not going to let go. They're not going to go down easy, right? The violence of surrender in the times before you. So a lot of resistance is what they're talking about here. A lot of resistance, but they shall succumb, it's, they're saying. The reshaping of what is life, of what is earth, of what shall be, comes into form, but slowly. So, so we will be able, and so we're, we are definitely playing a part, but we do also, they're, they're saying it comes, we, but we also need to recognize that, that the, the wave of light comes, but it's not like it's an presto change, you know, change -o where all of a sudden everybody looks like Glenda the Good Witch. You know, um, even though that would be cool, <laughs> but that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be a thing where, where it comes and we are shifted, but they've said before that it will be the moment we look back on the wave of light will be the moment we look back on is the moment that changed everything, but we won't, that means that we won't know it in the moment, 
that it will be a change that unfolds and changes us. And then we are going to be busy breathing by bringing in that change and grounding it into the earth. So that's really what this message is about. Yeah. Um, all right. Wow. 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 You guys. And you're saying, um, uh, it's important, Lisa says, it's important to do zero point meditation, which means no music, no tools, just quiet. So we learn to connect inside during tumultuous times. Love that. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, totally agree. That is a great, great suggestion. Natalie says, I am so appreciative and grateful to you for all the time and energy you put into channeling and deciphering these messages for. Thank you so much, Natalie. I really appreciate it. I love doing it. And it means so much to me to share it with you guys because it is, it is a lot. It would be, honestly, if I didn't share it, the messages wouldn't come, you know, like it's all, it's, it's not meant to be held by one person and it's, and it would be too much for me to hold by myself. So, and I feel like when we share it together, it changes. The message takes on a whole new life. Like I find stuff in these messages. I really learn things when we are together going through it that I didn't get when I read it by myself. It's meant to be for all of us. It really is. I believe that. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then uh, Teresa says, we don't have to keep trying to manifest it. it. We just let it go and let it happen. Yeah, 100% agree. And you see, my friends on Facebook are talking about how frazzled they are with things happening. I've told them to create their own space of peace and shine their light out so others can see and want to be there. They think I'm nuts, but I'm hoping I'm planting seeds. I think that is a great idea. Yeah, you got to speak in a language they understand. I think that's a great way to describe it and to, to help to try to help. And I think you're right that if they start... If people get, if they see, if they start feeling that they need help bad enough, <laughs> they will come looking for it, right? Yeah. If that is the idea of the coercive change. So let's go to the next paragraph. They say, um, respirate, to breathe, to remember that you are healing the earth with each causing of yourself, which is then every time you exhale, you're expressing yourself that you are also healing the earth with every exhale, right? Then they say, surrender to her, surrender to the instigation of this earth's blessing, of her greatest achievement yet, of her own belonging to the eternal mind, of her reaching to a higher state of, and frequency, her, to her own ascension and shift, and you are part of this surrender. So when we surrender in our breath, we are helping her to evolve, right? To move into her higher higher state of frequency. So we really are like, yes, we are human and we are her neurons. We are her thoughts. We are an important part. Our breath is an important part of her shift in consciousness. Wow. Going on the within the state of your own opening, the mind runs parallel to her own beginnings, to the beginnings of the earth, right? To her own beginnings. And you feel yourself enveloped within the new times that are coming so in other words, if we are open, we feel enveloped in the new times, right? We're able to feel and to perceive. When we are open, we're able to perceive the new energies. So it's almost like uh, uh, when we are in resistance, all we feel is pain. When we are in flow, we feel ease. Yeah. And so um, uh, the shape of your breath shall change and grow deeper, and you should become one with her and all things. So this is what's possible in surrender is that we start to feel this way, one with all things. Then they say, but the breath, what transpires between the breath of now and later shall overturn and suggest to yourself that the memories you've held are long forgotten and the new sensations can only yield such blessings as you have never known. So here they're talking about that this is not, and they mentioned it in the last paragraph, that this isn't an instantaneous process, that we are in an unfolding, that it's going to take time. And there's going to be a big period in the middle where, where it's not really clear where this is all going. And we're just kind of there surrendering and breathing and surrendering and breathing. And we're like, okay, <laughs> like, has it happened yet? And they're saying like, it's, it's, there's going to be this period of uncertainty where we don't really know where it's going and where we don't feel it yet. And we're just breathing. And it, it's, it reminds me a lot of when I first started trying to channel the angels and it would be like six months in the beginning, like when I didn't understand what was happening and it would just be this crazy pain for like six months and I didn't know what it was. And I just had to keep doing it. I had to keep going in and meditating and, and feeling that. And until finally it dawned on me, what they were trying to do was pull me up, right? So they could communicate with me, but I didn't understand. And it was six months of like, I don't get it, you know, but I kept, I didn't stop meditating. I just kept going in and kept going in. And that's what we have to do is we have to just keep breathing and keep opening and surrendering in this period of transition, knowing that there will be, and it may happen gradually, but there will be this period where this moment, right? When, when we, when our breath deepens, where we feel the new energies, where we change, where everything changes for us, which is like super cool, super cool. 
Um, and then they say the uncomfortableness of the in-between and surrender. So that's exactly what they're talking about, the uncomfortableness, the letting go, the having no knowing, the sensation that you are unveiling a tomorrow that is unclear. So that's the part we have to be prepared for, to know that there's going to be a period. We don't know how long that it'll be unclear where it's going to, how it's going to evolve. And they say in the breath, you find your release. In the exhale, you find your belonging. So that's our pathway through, is through the breath. The sensation that you are extinguishing upon the earth, the breath of your own fatigue, of your own exile, of your own desire, of your own expiring notions of change and what's coming. So in other words, that, that when we feel that way, we can focus on the breath as a release. If you feel panic rising, if you feel fear rising, if you feel dissatisfaction or impatience or anything, just exhale that and let it be absorbed into the earth, right? Our fatigue, our feelings of being in exile and being separated, right? Our own desires that feel unfulfilled, right? The, the, our, our, our notions about what it should be, right? That aren't coming to pass, like all the things that might lead us to feeling bad, let those out with every exhale. And then I love these next two paragraphs to me is like, how? So I love these because they're these paragraphs, like they're getting into describing how we're going to feel. This is as close as they can get to, to talking about dancing, right? This is where they're going to try to tell us this is what it's going to feel like. Here they go. They say, letting go, opening, yielding, exhaling, in the breath, the intake of the breath, the opening of the nose, the mouth, the chest, and the heart that grows in the dim surrender of the inhale. So feel that now, letting go, opening, yielding, right? And yielding in the exhale, how the body, how the body relaxes, right? Letting go, opening, yielding, letting go, right? In the breath, the intake of the breath, the opening of the nose, the mouth, and the chest. Feel how the chest expands and the heart, right? That grows in the dim surrender to the inhale, right? And so think about that as it grows, as the as the inhale gets gets, as you get to the end of your inhale, the heart grows. So think about it. it you get to the very end of the inhale, it starts, then it, it, uh, it, then it moves over and the heart expands, right? The breath makes it into the heart. And they say the longing to yield, the surrender to what is now, the next moment, to draw into the self the un unknown, to take in, to take on what surrounds you. So that's the feeling of surrender right there, the longing to yield, the surrender to what is now, the next moment to draw into the self, the unknown, to take in, to take on what surrounds you. So it's really that opening yourself and saying, you know, bring in, bring in light. Then the next paragraph, to let and allow the breath to be and to yield the body in its knowings to this world as it grows in the endowment of grace that is given in each breath that you take. So every time you, every take, you take a new breath, there'll be more grace in that next breath as this light comes, right? You are one with the earth and you inhale and exhale old meanings, old thoughts and frequencies. These are gifted back to the soil and you become the new earth and the earth becomes you and the two shall intertwine and renew each other. And this is that idea that as we exhale, we take in the new, and we breathe out what, we've, what we're done with. And then we take in some more new and we can breathe out more of what we're done with. And that what we're done with then gets planted like fertilizer into the earth, right? And then we hold, we are the thoughts. We are holding new thoughts for her and we're letting go of the old, right? And that's how she processes, right? It goes down into the soil. She, they said that she digests us, right? So she digests that. Yeah, so cool. And uh, um, uh, Mary says, I feel like this is our pre-op pep talk to help us prepare ourselves and our world for the phase of unknowing and perhaps tumult before the new earth manifests. I totally agree. It does. They have great bedside manner, don't they? It's a great pre-op conversation. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So then we become the earth. Basically, they say you become the new earth. So we are holding those thoughts of the new earth with every breath we take in. We are we are accepting the new earth and then letting that become. And then the earth becomes that and she becomes us and we are her. Right. Super cool. Then they say we draw you back to the breath to remember that in the days we herald in the times that come the breath shall remain a constant unto which you can hold and rely upon. So this is that idea of coming back to the breath as comfort you know, as a meditative practice, as bringing us back to, to quiet and to stillness, right? That we can always come back to our breath. And uh, the self in the inhale, and, and I think part of that is every time we breathe in, when we're consciously breathing in, we are bringing in new, which allows us to let go of the old. So it is healing in that moment. The self in the inhale and the self in the exhale are regulated by the consciousness of the one self, the soul that you are. 
So in other words, that whole process of this regulation of our, of our acceptance of new, of bringing in light, it's all regulated by our higher self. So it is part of the way that we connect to our higher self. You have at your core the ability to unfold the new now in surrender, in thought, in beliefs, in actuality, and in the process of your acceptance of the inhale. So this is powerful. They really are saying you at your core have the ability to unfold the new now, right? You make it happen through this surrendering to your own breath, right? Surrendering to the breath, to the whatever you're taking in the light that's around you, right? You're surrendering your thoughts, your beliefs, you're surrendering in actuality, right? And in the process of your acceptance in the inhale. Wow. In disbursement, in the exhale, you create more of this, right? You're creating more. So you're becoming the light and you're creating more of it when you exhale. More of life and living. The self that you are instigates change and becomes it all the same. So as you breathe in, you become the change and then you create the change when you exhale it into the earth. You become it and then you create it. So, so beautifully explained. Wow. Last paragraph. They say, we wish for the self to draw your heart your mind back to the breath in change. So during periods of change, draw your mind back to the breath and your heart back to the breath. In moments of trial, in moments where purity is lost, where chaos ensues, find your breath. Breathe in and surrender to the thought of your own divinity, right? So remember what you're doing with your breath, how you're breathing in some new light, that the light is gonna come in and change you. If you're feeling bad, breathe in some new light and let it change you. Feel your intertwinement with this earth and surrender your thoughts to the new. Be that self, accepting all that is within you. Create in the frame of your exchange of breath a new reality which you exude with each impression that is held in the breath you release to the earth. You shall become renewed as she shall. Yeah, and I like that they mentioned here accepting all that is within you. Because that is part of our healing is that idea. We're trying to get to self-love where we accept everything that we are and have ever been. We accept all of our wounding, all of our pain, everything that's happened to us. We accept it all. And we learn to love ourselves with it, right? With that. We're not trying to let it, you know, to, to shake it off. We're saying, nope, that's part, was part of what made me and I love me. Exactly as I am with all of that experience. And it, it takes work to get there. I know it does. That's why we do soul convergence. <laughs> is to get to that place where we can love all those pieces. Yeah. All right. Um, here we are. Teresa says, aha, the shite is fertilizer. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, you guys, what a message, you know, holy cow, what a message. So, uh, so yeah, so I just want to say thank you very much for sharing it with me and, uh, sending you guys tons of love. I hope you have an amazing, amazing weekend and see what you think. Let all this stuff I shared in the beginning about the eclipse and all of these different ideas, to me, it's a ton of crazy coincidences. And I just, I have stopped believing that coincidences are just coincidences. I believe that they are, they mean, they have meaning, that they're real, that they, they are telling us things. And there's a lot of coincidences around this eclipse. So see what you think, what you feel. And, and if you have anything to add to the conversation, please do. All right, you guys. Love you guys. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next Friday live. <laughs>